Hello everyone, my name is Arthur Perez and today I wanted to discuss the new developments in the journey to coronavirus medication intervention. Specifically, I'm going to discuss which vaccines have been developed and how individually each vaccine counteracts the coronavirus. So what is coronavirus? In simple terms, coronavirus is just an infectious disease that specifically targets the respiratory system of the human population that was discovered in late 2019 and scientists speculate that it comes from the panda lions and or um, bats from Wuhan, China that eventually spread across the entire world. So how do COVID-19 vaccines work? Well, COVID-19 vaccines help our body develop immunity to the virus that causes COVID-19 without us having to get the illness. Different types of vaccines work in different ways to offer protection, but with all types of vaccines, the body is left with the supply of memory T lymphocytes as well as B lymphocytes, which are basically just um, white blood cells that defend the body that will remember how to fight that virus in the future. It typically takes a few weeks for the body to produce T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes after vaccination. Therefore, it is possible that a person could be infected with a virus that causes COVID-19 just before or just after vaccination and then get sick because the vaccine did not have enough time to provide protection. The first time a person is infected with a virus that causes COVID-19, it can take several days or weeks for their body to make and use all the germ-finding tools needed to get over the infection. After the infection, the person's immune system remembers what it learned about how to protect the body against that disease. Thus, in this way, it provides ultimate protection. But like I mentioned before, if that person does get infected um, right before they get the vaccine or right after they get the vaccine, there's always that chance that they do not have the um, immunity for the disease. Sometimes after vaccination, the process of building immunity can cause symptoms such as fever, and these symptoms are normal and are typically a sign that the body is building immunity. That takes me to the main vaccines I'm going to discuss today. Vaccine production has been espoused by many as a fast track process, but the reality is that in order to have a reliable vaccine, scientists are forced to jump through governmental policies and perform many different trials. As of November in 2020, only two coronavirus vaccines had been approved, which and they were the Sputnik V, which was formerly known as GAM COVID vaccines that was developed and the um, Gamaleya Research Institute in Moscow had also developed a separate vaccine back in like August. However, as I mentioned before, vaccines that are fast tracked are typically viewed with a skeptical eye. Thus, experts have raised considerable concern about the vaccine safety and efficacy given it has not entered or th that they have not entered um, the phase three clinical trials. So to be specific, the kinds of vaccines that scientists create fall into three categories, the mRNA vaccines, protein subunit vaccines, and vector vaccines. So mRNA vaccines contain material from the virus that causes COVID-19 that gives um, specific body cells instructions for how to make a harmless protein that is unique to the virus after our cells make a copy of the specific protein, they destroy the genetic material from the vaccine. Our bodies then recognize that the protein should be there and build T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes that will remember how to fight the, um, the virus that causes COVID-19 if that person is infected again in the future. So then moving on to protein subunit vaccines, they're just basically also harmless pieces of the virus that cause COVID-19 instead of the entire germ. Once vaccinated, our immune system recognizes that the protein doesn't belong in the body and begins making T lymphocytes and antibodies. And if that person was ever infected in the future, the memory cells will recognize and fight the virus. And finally, vector vaccines contain a weakened version of a live virus, a different virus than the one that causes COVID-19, that has the genetic material from the virus that causes COVID-19 inserted in it. So this is basically what is known as a viral vector. Once the viral vector is inside our cells, the genetic material gives cell instruction to make a protein that is unique to the virus that causes COVID-19. Using these instructions, our cells make copies of the protein. This prompts our body to ultimately, again, make T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes that will remember how to fight the virus if that person is infected in the future. Something that I also want to mention is that there's a differentiation between live and unalive vac um, vaccines. So mRNA vaccines and protein subunit vaccines 
are not considered live um, uh, vaccines. But vector vaccines are considered live vaccines as they have a live version of the coronavirus or any other disease that could be related to in that context. Now, as I mentioned before, um, vaccines can both be inaccurate and they could typically cause several side effects. So the efficacy of vaccines not only has to pass the trials, but even when they are released, sometimes um, scientists have to modify or they change it depending on whether or not the virus evolves or if the vaccine that was released does have issues. So some of the uh, vaccine side effects that some scientists predict or have viewed in some of the trials is tiredness, dry cough, mild fever, and difficulty breathing. And this also makes sense when you think about it because specifically when you look at the uh, COVID-19 symptoms, you realize that they also parallel many of the vaccine sy symptoms. And it makes sense considering the fact that what, you, what a vaccine truly is at the end of the day is a type of resemblance to the disease. So it's, it, it, it's not uncommon for individuals that receive vaccines to have the same symptoms as, um, as individuals that are actually infected with COVID-19. And if you do get the um, symptoms, that also can mean that the vaccine or that your immune system is um, working in, towards um, ultimate immunity. So as one of my final thoughts, I just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware that there are many ways to prevent coronavirus and sure, like flattening the curve and wearing masks is important, but at the end of the day, getting vaccinated is one of the many steps that you can take to protect yourself and others from COVID-19. And it is truly the step that is the most e efficient and last and produces the most um, long-term protections. Protection from COVID-19 is critically important because for some people it can cause severe illness or death, especially those that are tend to be in the um, older age groups or those individuals that unfortunately suffer to um, chronic diseases. So stopping a, a pandemic requires using all the tools available, which means that vaccines work with your immune system so your body will be ready to fight the virus if you are ever exposed. Other steps like masks and social dis distancing help reduce your chance of being exposed to the virus or spreading it to others. But at the end of the day, like I mentioned, vaccines are always the best or most efficient uh, way to prevent uh, COVID-19. Together, COVID-19 vaccination and following CDC's recommendation to protect yourself and others will offer um, the best protection for COVID-19. That concludes my presentation. I just want to thank everybody for listening. And these are my sources, and I hope you learned something new.